Hello, 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 beautiful people of the world. Welcome to the Happy Conversation Idea Show, where you witness all the greatest thoughts, ideas, and stories of the happiest people. And today we have a very wonderful guest today here with us, Miss Lydia Brashel. Uh, Lydia, anchored by her solid belief that people are the greatest resources on our planet. Lydia Brashel is committed for their fostering the self-development, leadership, and communication skill of people wanting to make a difference in our world through heart-centered leadership and using their voice. In fact, since 1993, Lydia has mastered using her own voice by working with leaders in the nonprofit organization, Toastmasters, raising through the ranks of Toastmaster leaderships, Lydia has learned how to celebrate each person's unique leadership style, honoring the effective communication and contributing to their personal and professional development through experimental education. Her interest in leadership development comes as no surprise. Lydia helps well-known clients such as TELUS, ICBC, Save On Foods, Hotel Vancouver, Tourism Vancouver, Tourism BC, and Simon Fraser University finding their branding voice and deliver the message in powerful and authentic communication and advertising campaigns. Living as heart-centered leader is a wonderful way to continue leveraging her voice and her passion for developing the human spirit through leadership training, speaking, and education. Please welcome dear Lydia Brasho. Thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure, Lydia. It's an honor and a pleasure today to see you here. Such a wonderful time that uh, you've given your precious time to us to learn from your vast wisdom. So without any delay, I would like to ask you, please tell us about your childhood struggles and adversity, how you remain humble and happy while progressing towards success. Thank you so much. That's a great question. And the way that I'd like to start off with that is it was, there was a lot of, I had a lot of great things that happened in my childhood, but there was all, certainly some things that when I reflect back on them now were quite at the time devastating. I had a, my mom was, I didn't know at the time, but now I realized was quite depressed. And what that meant was I had a lot of neglect when I was a child. I didn't know my hair had to be cut really short because it was always tangled and matted to my head. I, my hands were brown from uh, not being able to wash my hands properly. There was my clothes, many things that um, just from absolute neglect. And now I realize that, it, it, as I said, it was because my mom was depressed, but I didn't realize it. It was challenging in ways uh, as a child, but not, I was still a happy child. I didn't realize that those were things until later on in my life and how much they had affected me. Okay. There was, and a lot of unhappy times in terms of my mom was um, yelled a lot and um, didn't have a lot of interaction. She had a lot of like had happy moments, but there was a lot of times when inside her home, People didn't see that there was a lot of neglect that was going on. And the thing that now that the age that I'm at and I have the t I've had the time to reflect back on what all of that meant to me, I realized that throughout that whole process, um, of course, my mom didn't do it on purpose because she had had lived through a life of hell basically when she grew up. So mm -hmm. she was just working with what she knew how to use. Okay. I also had my, my dad, who was super kind and well-known in the community, and he passed away actually 27 years ago, and even to this day, oh, sorry to know I still that. know him and, and remember him for his kindness and the things that he did for people in the community and, and who he was, how he just supported people. So, oh. Yeah. That's great. Well, it's very touching and very inspiring as well that how you had that the passion and then you still <clears throat> cope up with that and remaining humble and joyful. So mm -hmm. tell us like how, 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 how did you find the purpose in life? 
that what you are today with your profession? Well, I think there was always the underlying kindness piece in it. I also, um, you asked me the question about pictures before this show. And I thought when I was one year old, uh, I, my dad worked not far away from our home, but it meant that I had to cross a road by myself to get there. And I thought that was the beginning of my being daring and determined. And uh, I, I laugh at it now when I look back at that photo, but it's, <laughs> it really was the set point of taking on a challenge without even sometimes thinking about, you know, that there might be some consequences to it. Of, of course, I always weigh out the consequences, but just that, that knowing that uh, there's something I want to create or something I want to get to, and I have this drive to get to it. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that's, that's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So as your summary is very vast and very accomplishing. And um, so tell us, why are you so passionate about helping to empower women by overcoming self-doubt? It's interesting because when I started doing coaching and life coaching, I realized working with clients that the underlying issue was self-doubt. And it wasn't just with those clients, many, many people deal with self-doubt. And sometimes we just, usually we just work over top of it and it doesn't even uh, appear as self-doubt because we've created such a habit around it. That's just the way that we operate. And what I found is that once we can overcome self-doubt and get to the place of self-trust or self-love, then beautiful things happen in people's lives when they're able to get there. But normally there's a, there's a big gap that happens um, that stops them from actually getting to that place. Okay. So I, it helped me to start realizing that uh, I was dealing with my own self doubts and uh, helping other people. There was amazing things that happened. Oh, wow. And that's what motivates you and to pursue that further to help others as well, to yes. make sure that they also get the best results in their life as well, while not doubting their own intelligence and all. That's wonderful. Exactly. Wow, that's mm -hmm. wonderful. So tell us, what are the key principles of a professional growth? Sorry, of a professional coach. growth. Yeah, what are the key principles that one should uh, practice as a daily discipline or ongoing process? What are the key principles for the professional growth? Well, the main thing is to be able to listen. And I you have to listen at an entirely different level, not just listening for what you want to hear, but listening at a, I call it listening between the lines. Basically, you need to listen for what's not being said, listen to body language, voice modulation. Actually, some of it relates quite well to Toastmasters and public speaking. Yes. You need to listen to what's not, like what's not happening, what they're not revealing to you in order to be able to ask those questions and be really curious. So I would say to answer your question, listening, being able to be curious and to not be not judge, to be able to, to be objective with where the person is at and work with them on okay. uh, totally where they're at at the moment. Wonderful. And these are the foundation basic thing that any uh, person who want to grow in this professional area while listening carefully, attentively, not judging and holding a pause before even saying and replying, just not rushing to the answer. Well, that's wonderful. I've attended so many Toastmasters during the meetup groups in downtown. So it was a very wonderful experience for me. Great. Um, uh, tell us about how young adults can find the passion in their careers. Because a lot of time, young adults, they do a lot of drifting and they're not sure what exactly they want to do after their school, college, universities. And they keep drifting. They just take the job because somebody has offered them or their friends and suggested. And they end up thinking that this is not what I wanted to do. And they have wasted a big chunk of amount of time and years. So what's the suggestion or advice for young adults, how can they find the passion in their career? Well, I think it's really important to pay attention to the things that you love to do okay. and to find that passion. There's a lot of times we're told that we should do this because that will help us to make money and, or we should do this because it will get a significance in the world. And really 
what my experience has been is if you follow your passion, the money will come. If you follow your passion, then you can, um, if you follow your, your passion, then it gives you a way of life versus mm-hmm. just a way to make a living. And so find the things that you love to do. Like I, I love being in nature. I love dancing. I love making a difference in people's lives and, and therefore making a difference in the world. So really being able to, to tap into what is it that you love to do? Wow. What, is, what makes you feel good? Excellent. Yeah. And it's very difficult. Like, you know, we have been bombarded with so many hundreds and thousands of options these days, and it's becoming challenging for young adults to pick and choose what exactly area of their vocation and a career or business they should be doing. So finding love, what you do. Wow. That's an excellent way. Excellent. Okay. Next, um, please tell us like how to live consciously and become mentally strong. Now, a lot of time, as I mentioned earlier, like, you know, we are been drifted and we have so many information bombarded on social media and so on. So we, we don't take decision consciously. So how to live consciously and become mentally strong? I love that question. (laughs) Thank you. Consciously to me is being in the present moment. So it's no matter where we're at, being able to be in our bodies, because oftentimes we're taught to be outside of our bodies. And so this moment, it's like the the conversation that you and I are having right now is that we're both just totally in this moment, having this conversation, even though the whole world is going on all around us. True. And so to get to that place, it's just a, it's a, a habit, creating a habit of being able to be conscious and amazing things happen when, when we're in this, not thinking about what's the next thing I need to do, or who do I need to talk to or anything like that. It's just totally about being in this present moment. In the moment. Yeah. But there, but there comes challenging time that sometime we've been not heard or, We've been not listened by other people, like especially parents and relationship and all. So my next question is, why do most people keep thinking negatively about their relationship? This is actually uh, something I've been really looking at lately. I, one day I, I heard on the radio while I was driving that it takes 10,000 hours to be an expert. Wow. Like 10,000 hours of practice of being an, to be an expert. And I thought, well, that works both ways. It can be negative things or positive things. So I really started to check in with myself. What have I been practicing like for anything that's negative going on in my life or things that you know I want to accomplish that I haven't been able to accomplish? What are the habits that I've been creating? Mm-hmm. And what do I practice on a daily basis? So I really started going through every day. What is it that I do on a daily basis that contributes to negativity or anything like that. And when it comes to relationships in particular is to want the best for the other person, like to get to, well, first of all, to have a great relationship with myself. And I've been able to to carve that out. And when I have, when I'm in that place, then being able to create a, a great relationship with someone else is pretty easy actually. Because then I just come from a place of caring about the other person and what's what's going to make a difference for them. Wow. So that's wonderfully said that think the best for the other person and of course for yourself too. And most Mm -hmm. of the time we fail to understand other people's uh, happiness and their, and as you mentioned in your earlier first answer, like, you know, listening is a very powerful tool and a a key thing in any relationship in personal or professional. I strongly agree on that. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that wise uh, words on that. My next question is, is it okay to love someone and still choose to say goodbye? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. I would say I have, um, I've been married and, and divorced and that person, of course it wasn't, divorces aren't usually a, a, a nice ending, but I have to say I've developed a good relationship with that person. And so it was important once I learned what my part was in the, in the divorce that I created a better relationship with that person outside of, of the marriage. So it takes courage to do that. I think it's not that easy. It takes courage yeah, absolutely. and it comes. So 
what, what do you, um, <clears throat> how did you cope up with that? Like, did you meditate or you practice something or some daily discipline or you pray? Uh, how did it happen? Because it's not easy with a big relationship and to say goodbye to someone, it's not really that easy when we say it, but it's really difficult to do in a practical way. It, it is. And it, again, it goes back to being curious. It, it's about asking those questions that lead to a deeper meaning of what, what really happened. So, okay. Yeah. So that's great. Yeah. Okay. Um, next question is how to break the wall of the depression and live the life fullest? Now, a lot of people, they, today's most of the time, a lot of people are depressed, stressed, and anxiety and all sort of thing. And we hear now and then, like, how to break the wall of the depression and live the life fullest? Yes. Well, of, of course, depression means that help is needed. So I would say get a help from a professional. But some of the habits that might a person dealing with depression might want to try is just realizing that if they um, if there's something that shifts their energy I do a lot of work with with energy and it's it's about a friend of mine a long time ago when I did my coach training she said to me and when I was going through divorce I thought how am I going to get through this and she said every time you feel down or you're panicking about something yeah do whatever it takes to get back to joy and wow. so I practiced that and it got me through that time so I, if I felt down or anxious or anything, I would turn on music and dance or do something, hug my son or whatever it might, it might be that brought me back to a place of, of feeling joy. Wow, that's wonderful. Joy is very important in relationship and all. So related to that, um, please tell us about how a positive relationship can thrive in personal and professional way. How it can thrive. How, positive. Posi how a positive relationship can thrive or flourish in a personal and professional way so that one relationship should uh, be in so much in harmonious relationship with each other that they should allow each other to grow in a personal and professional way. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, going back to wanting the best for the other person. So if I can keep my um, fears and and anxieties or whatever out of out of it and being able to have discussions with with the other person that don't come up don't come from a place of fear of conflict a lot of okay. people fear conflict and therefore they hold back but if you need to ask the question and make it a safe space without judgment for the other person then you're more likely to to develop a deeper relationship and so being able to ask those questions and make it a safe space, I think makes creates a, a much better connection because okay. you're getting both like getting deeper feelings from both sides. Yeah. That's wonderful. And that's the key. So tell mm -hmm. us what is the, what is the foundation of a happy lifestyle? Now you are a life coach. You have treated and you healed so many people's life and touched people's life thousands around the world and you've been doing for over decades and decades. Like ultimately we, at the end of the day, we seek happiness. And I, as we, the wise people say, the happiness reside within us. But again, as you as in a wonderful life coach and experience, tell us like, what is the foundation of a happy lifestyle? To be happy. To <laughs> 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 find those ways that make, make us feel happy like I think contributing I volunteer a lot of my time and it's it's very satisfying for me very rewarding so yes. finding those things that and and making the decision that rather than staying in a negative place yeah we all only have a limited amount of time in this planet so at so the true. end of it do we want to say we were happy or, or do we want to say no I, I you know I wanted to live unhappily every single day so it's a it's a choice, really. Yeah, so it's a choice. And choice. sometimes, but it's become a very difficult to uh, choose um, whether or not that we are doing, we are on the right path or not, but it's a choice. So that's, that's a great answer on that. Now, as you mentioned earlier about, we, you talked about the relationship and all, please tell us about that. W what is the power of unconditional love? Oh, 
power of unconditional love. I've heard people say that there is no such thing. And I have to say, I, I went through time thinking that that was true. Okay. But now I, I believe that if you can live without the, the judgment of another person, uh, do the, the curiosity, ask them questions, like find out and don't be afraid to ask the tough questions, the hard questions. Yeah. It usually come from our own fear. That's what makes them tough is that we have already built the story around it. So let down that story and just deal with the facts. Just yeah. ask the questions without the story already built up behind it. Wow. And what if the person is not ready to answer? How would you deal that then? Sometimes people become a little afraid or shy or fear, or maybe they're stubborn. They don't answer. So how would you put some ray of light on that? Well, it depends on the situation, but if the person wasn't responding, I would ask them if there's a reason why and, okay. and ask like something that makes it easy for the person to give some sort of response. So it's not that it's mistakenly that they just didn't understand or didn't know that they were supposed to respond. Okay. Um, I, I think it's good to just keep asking those questions until the person actually says, I, Say, I okay. don't want to respond. Okay, so go to that point and make it very politely and in a courtesy way that you get the best answers that how we can gel each other in harmony or we can find the best unconditional love in that. Mm -hmm. So it may sound, and the next question may be silly, but a lot of time uh, they have asked me question and all, is that okay to fall in love with someone like unconditionally from the day one you meet or you should hold your emotions and test and try in relationship? <laughs> That is a really interesting question. And I, I have to say that one of the things recently someone had, had uh, presented something to me about they were really interested in someone and there was this challenge and that challenge. And I thought, and, you know, what if it doesn't work like six months down the road? And I thought, wow, what an uh -huh. opportunity in six months to give it a try and do try. <laughs> If you get your heart broken at the end of it, you have all of that six months that was absolutely amazing. So why not give it a try? So, why not? Yeah, give it, a try? it can be from the beginning. It from from the beginning. Good. I I really admire and appreciate that. I wish would be close to you to high five for you. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> uh, yeah, because there's been a lot of time people have been asking and. Uh, so I thought I'll ask you because you're in that field as well. So please tell us about your the, the services you provide and, and what exactly your life coaching you do and emphasize and focus on so that we can we our audience can also get more benefit out of your work. Well, normally what happens is people come to me because they've got a they want to achieve something and they haven't been able to achieve it. Their dream has been put on the back burner for a long time and they can never seem to get to it. And so they come to me for to, they've decided that they, that's what they want to do. They want to get to that. Or sometimes they come to me because they're just in a lot of pain and they're frustrated and don't know which direction to go from where they're at. So okay. there's a, there's a whole variety of reasons that people can come to to get coaching. But basically what we do is we sit down and, and figure out what it is that they want to achieve, where they want to go to. And I don't get into too much of like the past because that's not what coaching is about, but yeah. it's more of a cheerleading, helping people to see what they can't see, what their blind spots are and, and listening to what their talents are that they don't recognize within themselves. Like there's a lot of people who don't, I, I see this in, in Toastmasters and public speaking a lot because people don't see the talents that they have or they don't, they don't recognize them. And therefore, as a coach, when I'm listening to people, I listen for those things that they yes. are hiding or aren't conscious of or maybe a blind yeah. spot or a block. Oh, that's great. And then you have a set of uh, your creative questions regarding to each individual is that what kind of question you want to ask so that they can become very easy and flexible to answer so that you can give the best suggestion and advice on that. Is that right? Actually, um, I don't have a set of questions that I ask. Okay. All right. Maybe <laughs> just for the opening conversation, but the, the type of coaching that I do is very 
intuitive. It's very much um, listening to that person and taking, I've done self-development for 30 some years and taking all of that background that I have and experience and all the people connection that I've had over the years <clears throat> and listening to that person, being curious and making plans, like helping them to make plans for where it is that they want to get to. So Wow. Yeah, it, it's an interesting thing with this type of coaching, because the only way that you can really prepare is to get yourself prepared before you get on the call. We'll get on it. Eh? I'm just going to take some water. Sure, take it down. <clears throat> yeah, so it's, it's, and I know there's different types of coaching out there. <clears throat> Excuse me, but this in particular is totally focused on that person so that you get to the powerfulness within them. Yep. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, so a set a set of questions wouldn't work in this type of coaching because I okay. want to take people deeper into into what it they're, and all. Yeah, so it, it's totally every coaching session is totally different. Great. Well, that's phenomenal. Okay. So this is our second round. We usually I do um, this round called make the world happy round. So these are your wonderful short and sweet answer will be highly appreciated on that. Um, the first question is uh, how to find a purpose in life? How to find a purpose in life. I think that we actually are born with a purpose in life. And sometimes it just gets with the things that happen to us in childhood or, or along the way, that purpose may get buried. But I think it's the, uh, going back to the things that make you happy, the things that make, bring you joy, and um, the things that feed your soul, basically. Lovely. That's wonderful. Next, um, what makes you happier, the intelligent part of your life or the emotional part of your life? Well, that's an interesting question. I I think the intelligent part. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, intelligent part. All right, good. Next, who is the true teacher, the failure or the success? Oh, failure, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Why are you where you are in your life right now? Well, because of failures, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I learned a long time ago that when I when things fail, to just take a deeper look. Like, and I, yeah. I really think it happens for a reason. So I look for that reason. Uh, Excellent. I love that answer. I really love that answer. Okay, <clears throat> you have only you have to choose only one among these options. What will you choose from money, time, love, or sex? Mm, I would have to say love. Okay. I, I think that time is a perspective. And I think that um, love is something that everyone wants. And yes. it seems like the thing that often we struggle to get to or, or to feel. True. And, um, so yeah, love. That's that's love. why I've chosen to. I'm passionate about spreading more love in the world. Lovely. And I'm in the same boat, so I wouldn't be agree more than that. That's that's thousand and million time yes for that. Yes. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Next, uh, one word which will bring more love in a relationship. One word. Hmm. I think listening. Okay, that's good. I think that's admire. I really admire that. Uh, mm -hmm. One word, listening. I hope people are listening, the audience, <laughs> so they get to know that 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 one profound word can improve your love and relationship. That's good. Absolutely. Okay. Next, never say that specific word when a woman is angry. Never say that specific word when a woman is angry. Hmm. <laughs> that specific word um uh, i'm not sure that specific <laughs> word when a woman is angry um 
it can be any word like there are more than 600,000 word in english dictionary but there is something that woman will not appreciate that when she is angry she will not appreciate that word <laughs> that well i think more than a word i would say a sentence yeah. which would be what's wrong with you <laughs> okay all right there you go okay what's wrong with you never say that to the woman never she... say that no okay <laughs> men out there get the keyword okay next what to do to cheer up a woman and if she's upset oh, or angry yeah if she's angry well first is listen to her okay <laughs> all right the, the second is to be to be kind and understanding i know women tend uh, often we are we are more emotional and yeah. so therefore it it takes a bit of of skill to be able to um understand listen if listen. if it's intense but yeah listening i think is the first step listening the first thing okay next what to do to cheer up a man now because you deal with men and women both in coaching and you have a lot of great experience so what to do to cheer up a man if he or he is angry and upset give him space <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> now men will be laughing out there my friends give him a space give him a space that's a good one Okay. Um next, a secret to finding a soulmate. Mm, secret to finding a soulmate. Well, the thing that I've learned is to have that relationship with yourself first and okay. then and then seek it with someone else. And it just it puts it at such a totally different perspective when you're able to do that. okay because nice. there's not the insecurities and the the other things that come along with with finding um a soulmate so, wonderful yeah. that's the brilliant answer okay the one person you cannot forget one person i cannot forget my dad oh nice yeah, my dad yeah. absolutely he was very he, kind as he said past yeah. 27 years ago and i still think about him all the time and the thing wow. cuz i spent a lot of time on him with him yeah. and so all his blessings are on you always indeed thank you okay what is the best advice you have ever received oh i've received a lot of really good advice i would think the hmm, best advice is to be yourself okay wonderful yeah. Definitely. To be yourself. I love that. What is the worst advice you have ever received? <laughs> <laughs> worst advice. Hmm. I've received lots of that also. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would say to be uh, it would be around being greedy. Uh, I think that any anyone who gives advice around being greedy, I greedy, I yeah. really don't like that kind of thing, so um yeah. Okay. Next. In business, do you believe in safety or risk? Risk. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Although there's times of safety for sure, but I think risk risk really helps us to get to places in life. So. Excellent. Okay. Um next, what mother earth means to you? Oh, I have a beautiful connection with mother earth, so it's it I think it's one of the things that we don't do is listen enough to mother earth so something even walking in the forest and and looking at the uh, absolute artwork of a forest and having that connection knowing wow. that everything in there's alive wonderful wonderful that's the greatest gift on planet earth we have got the life itself to admire the beauty of mother earth and worship and protect it that's yes. so true right next um what is more important a blessing or a hope in a life a blessing or a hope is yes okay i think blessing that's hope is something to me is is out there may or may not happen but a blessing uh, i i started something really interesting recently because there's been a, a lot of people who have lost loved ones and and the response that i do is send them my condolences and wish yes. they and their family many blessings because i think there's so many things that we need to deal with that are are tough these days and to have blessings happen to us is one feels good and it it's it's like a comfort i think comfort. it's like yeah it's so pure nectar it's divine 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Great. Okay. Next. <clears throat> If God makes you a man for a day, what will you do more of and less of? Oh, <laughs> that's an interesting question. What would I do more of? I, as a man, I think I would do more um, open heart, like more. Not that men don't do that, but I, I think I would just, as a man, I would do more uh, open-heartedness and, okay. and more love. Yeah. Lovely. And less of? Less of? Hmm. Um, this may not go well, but less of anger. Okay. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um <clears throat> Next, what is most important, personal development or professional development? Personal development, for sure. Okay. One of the things about coaching, uh, actually, is that people, I think, hire coaches because they have a business thing that they want to take care of. And it ultimately always comes down to a personal issue that they're actually True. that's in the way. So, yeah, personal development, for sure. That's the backbone of any ventures and any relationships i will say proudly on that yeah yes <clears throat> what kind of sound or voice do you like to listen sound or voice um i would say nature like yesterday morning i woke up at dawn and the birds were singing and wow. i live near the ocean so the sound of the ocean yeah excellent lovely Next, if you would be born again, what profession would you like to choose? If I were born again, what profession would I choose? Hmm. I think I would like to um, to be a world traveler. Okay. I've traveled a bit, but I, 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 I have a dream right now to be able to dance around the world and and. The idea behind that is to be able to learn different dances of different uh, ethnic groups and countries and things like that. Wonderful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Traveling is the best thing. We can ever learn the culture, the food, the nature. And I think it's the best way of uh, learning indirectly a communication skill. Mm-hmm. I strongly Absolutely. agree on that. Yeah. <clears throat> Next. What is your favorite book name? Oh, I have read, I, I read lots and lots awesome, of books, awesome. but my favorite right now is I'm rereading The Artist's Way. I've had the book for more than 20 years and I just picked it up recently. And because I, I realized that the um, creativity that's required in, in business and in life is something that I was not doing. And so reading The Artist's Way has given me that creativity back, which is a lot more fun, I have to say. It makes right. life so much more fun. <laughs> <clears throat> because we would like to know, you've been in this industry for over two, three decades in personal development and all. It's very, very important to know that. What are you reading? What is the best book? Well, thanks mm-hmm. for sharing on that. Yeah. Okay. Next, uh, Lydia. Um, what do you do when you are happy? Mm. I mean, you're always happy. I know that. It's, <laughs> this is not that point that you're unhappy. So what do you do more of when you're happy? What do I do more of? Uh, I have to say, I, I often sit in silence. I, I just love, I've moved from the mainland to the island. And the difference I noticed was the silence compared to being on the mainland. So wow. I just love sitting and, and looking at the the forest i can see the forest out through my windows and um, yeah wow wonderful next so what do you do when you are unhappy what do i do when i'm unhappy well i i have a number of tools from being a coach that help me to get back to being happy but i would i would say the biggest one that i or the one that i use most often is i connect with, with a friend who can hear me okay speak out what it is that I'm unhappy about. That's a, that's a really great advice on that because most of the time what we do during this all stressful moment, we keep it in our chest and mind and heart and it becomes like, you know, volcano inside. And sometimes mm-hmm. it brushed out in a negative way on our relationship or to ourselves or in a family. Speaking it out loud, <clears throat> politely to our friends or family, whoever you think is trustworthy person and that 
you can share. I think I strongly agree on that. And this is this is a really great piece of advice you have given speaking to others. That's good. Okay, so next, what is your prediction for 2022? 2022, well, one of the things that I'm seeing, and this goes with the World Love Project, is that people are actually, I think we're really in a place where there's a lot of introspective things going on. And I think that there's going to be a whole lot more love happening in the world as people realize, you know, we need to connect with other people, we need to watch out for other people. And the, just knowing that there's going to be more love in the world um, will make yeah. it an easier place to be. Yeah. What a wonderful answer prediction. Now, this is the next one related to that. What is your prediction of the world for 30, 20, 100 years from now? 100 years from now. Hmm. I would say, uh, well, because we're becoming a lot more educated, I think that people get more and more educated and tuned and in tuned with each other that uh, I think we'll be able to not read each other's minds, but we'll be in tune with other people's intuition and things sure. like that. So we'll be able okay. to connect on that level. So is that scary or it's uh, <clears throat> on a positive side? <laughs> it can be. Well, if it comes from a place of love, it's positive side. Positive side, yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's good. That's wonderful. Okay, next. Uh, what impresses you more? What impresses you more? The social media connection or writing a letter? Oh, that's interesting. Social media is so easy because you connect so so quickly. But, <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's good. Okay, next. If Imagine if you would be the host of this show and I would be the guest, what question would you ask me? What question? Oh, what question would I ask you? I would ask you, what does happiness mean to you? Wow, that's a, that's a very um, brilliant, permanent question you asked me. And um, <clears throat> happiness mean to me is there. There are two important reasons. The name happy I got because of my mom. She gave me, and, and I was very young, about three year old something when she passed away. Oh, she committed wow. suicide and. Um, and I think after that, it was the greatest insult of my intelligence that I would be not happy. So I chose to be happy every morning instead of frustration. I chose happiness. It's my choice, as you said earlier. And happiness mean to me is um, I can proudly say that God has made me a noble servant of the world to serve others. And serving others gives me an enormous amount of happiness. I feel so happy when I serve others in any shape or found. So serving mm -hmm. others makes me so, so happy. That's beautiful. Thank yeah. you. Okay, so this is the last one now for you and um, we'll wrap up this. Um, what is your favorite word or a quote? Mm, well, my favorite quote, um, I, there's two actually one is everything happens for a reason and the other one is I love this quote it's uh, sorry I just forgot it all no, it's okay. <laughs> trust yourself you know more than you think you do and it's by Dr. Spock that is Spock I think yeah I read that on your website too it's very profound trust yeah. yourself yeah <laughs> That's brilliant. I am so, so happy with that. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, Lydia, for your wonderful and your precious time you share with us, your thoughts, your ideas and story, which is very empowering and inspiring. I hope all the wonderful audience would have got all the best answers. And I want to say thanks so much to the wonderful, caring audience who have already supported me to where I am today without of their support and help and blessing. It would be not possible. And um, Keep waiting and keep watching the Happy Conversation Idea Show, where you can witness the thoughts, ideas, and stories of happiest people. And to, until next Sunday, we'll have a special guest. We'll see you soon there. Thank you. Thanks, Lydia. Awesome. Thank you.